Hey there, my friend. My name is Christina Rafano from NursingSOS.com, and in this video today, we are walking through the pathophysiology of diabetic ketoacidosis, plus the must-know info that you need to know about the patho to pass your nursing school exams and the NCLEX. So hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell and let's dive in. Now, before we dive in, I just wanted to make sure that you know about my free study guide pack. I have 10 free study guides that I would love to give to you to help you study easier in nursing school. And the link to those is down below in the description. So be sure to snag them after you watch this video. Now, DKA occurs when there's not enough insulin in the body and insulin is required to help Help move glucose into the cells. I like to think of insulin as the key that unlocks the cells and lets the glucose in. So when you think of insulin, think of it as a key. Now glucose is the cell's best source of energy. But in diabetes, the pancreas isn't making insulin anymore or the cells are resistant to it. So without insulin, the cells can't get any glucose. And because the cells don't have any glucose, they start converting fat into energy instead. And this fat breakdown leads to ketones building up in the blood, which are acids. So here's how I like to think about this. Without the insulin, without that insulin key, the body uses fat and the ketones. So both insulin and fats are keys, but insulin is definitely better than fat and the ketones, you'll see why in a minute. But that's just a nice memory trick to help you remember that key tones. Now DKA occurs mostly in patients with type one diabetes, but it can also happen with type two as well. So let's think about this. DKA happens when there's not enough insulin in the body. And during type one diabetes, the pancreas isn't making any insulin. So that's why it most often occurs in type one diabetes. Now during type two diabetes, the cells, they become resistant to insulin. So in type two diabetes, it's really not a problem of a lack of insulin in the body, but rather a lack of insulin's ability to move glucose into the cells because the cells are resistant to that insulin. So in both cases, insulin can't get glucose into the cell. So you know me and you know that I love putting pathophysiology into simple steps, step-by-step -step processes for you to follow. So let's do that here. Now you won't see these steps anywhere else. I just made them up for you to help make learning all of this pathophysiology easier. And I think it it really helps so you can see how everything really fits together and so you can critically think about it easier. So step number one of the pathophysiology of DKA, DKA is there is not enough insulin. So normally in the body, the pancreas produces insulin and insulin's job is to grab out of that glucose, right? And move it into the cells. So that cell can use it for energy. Pretty cool, right? I like to think about insulin as a door-to-door -door salesman and he is selling glucose. So Mr. Insulin, he goes around the neighborhood and knocks on door after door after door and all of the body cells asking if anyone wants to buy his glucose. Now remember our memory trick here, insulin is like a key that unlocks those body cells. So normally all of those cells, they want to buy insulin's glucose because they are all hungry, they are starving for that energy. And let's be honest, who doesn't like sugar? right? So typically insulin gives away a lot of glucose, but here's the problem of diabetic ketoacidosis. Insulin doesn't show up for work. So there's all this glucose floating around the blood, but Mr. Insulin isn't there. So there's no one to give the cells their glucose. And now hyperglycemia occurs, which is step number two of DKA. This causes hyperglycemia because there isn't any insulin around to move that glucose into the cells. So that glucose just builds up and builds up and builds up in the blood. So the cells are really wanting their glucose, but Mr. Insulin isn't around to give it to them. But thankfully they have some stored up fat to use for energy. And this is step number three now of DKA. The cells use fat for energy instead. And when fat is converted to energy, ketones are produced, which are acids. Now remember our memory trick, when the cells don't have insulin as the key, it will use the fat and make ketones. And this is step number four, ketones are produced as a byproduct of fat metabolism. And then this leads to step number five, which is acidosis. The more the ketone levels rise in the body, the more the acid levels rise in the body because ketones are 
acids. So the more ketones there are, the more serious the acidosis becomes. And this causes a lot of problems in the body, which you'll see in the signs and symptoms of diabetic ketoacidosis. I actually have a whole video on that inside the Nursing SOS membership community. So be sure to join the wait list so you can join the next time enrollment opens and get access to all of my step-by-step -step nursing lectures, my cheat sheets, my study guides, guides, all of it. Now, if you're struggling with pathophysiology in nursing school, definitely check out this video here where I walk you through how to make it so much easier and my top tips for learning patho so you can pass your exams. And be sure to get my free study guide pack. The link is down below for that. And if you like this video, hit that like button, write love in the comments below because that is what we do here on my channel. And as always, my friend, go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I will see you over there in that next video.